Okay, ladies and gentlemen, in this video, we're answering some questions. <laughs> First up is DGP bar oil. Is that good stuff? Well, we're about to find out because we've got a 42 inch bar and chain on a saw that is not set up to properly oil a 42 inch bar and chain. This right here is supposed to have um, better lubricity and it actually uh, has better tackiness so that it sticks to the bar and chain so that you don't need as much of it to do the same job. Um, so therefore, a saw that doesn't oil quite good enough for such a big bar um, should really benefit from something like this. Next up is Archer Pro. This is a 42 inch bar and chain. It is a semi-chisel um, ripping chain. It's actually set up for ripping, which you can tell that by it having such a blunt top plate. All right, it's quite blunt. There's not much of an angle to it at all. So that means it's set up for ripping. What else can I tell you? Uh, so, oh, and I get this question a lot, all right? And that is, can I use an Echo 590 on a sawmill? Well, if you're asking that question, my guess is you're thinking smaller than what I've got right here. But we about to find out if my ported Echo 590 is capable of getting through this big ass white oak with that 42 inch bar and chain setup. Now I will say that this is not stock, but it is a 590, it's not a 620. It's a 590 that I have ported up and uh, it's an, on a 96 degree exhaust roof. And uh, that is not ideal, you know? But I mean, it's gonna work, we're gonna see. We're gonna watch it happen right here. So without further ado, let's get to ripping. See how she does.
Okay. Oh, let's see what we got going on. Yeah. Okay. So let's have a look at the damage. Let go. Holy Jesus. <laughs> Holy Jesus. Yeah, okay. I'm a believer. Yeah. I, I, oh, that's hot as can be. Holy shit, that's, that burnt my wrist. But look at that. Look at how there's no paint off of that. Oh, let go. Oh, dang it. All right, let's do, get a close up here. Holy friolis. That is, never expected that folks. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a believer. All right, if you've ever milled anything at all, you'll know that it's extremely difficult on your bars and chains, massively difficult. And I just milled, we'll show you how thick of a cut it is here shortly, but I bet you it's 20 to 22 inches in some places of white oak. All the way through, without stopping, I never even shut the saw off. And every time I've ever done anything like this before, that bar gets so effing hot that it bakes it bakes the uh, paint right off of it. I, I'm, I'm touching it. I just shut this thing off. It hasn't had maybe a minute and a half to cool. Two, three minutes, something like that. Nothing. It's cool to the touch. Okay, uh, yeah, guys. That DGP oil is expensive. Uh, and that DGP oil was given to me by George. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you want to look at this and go, oh, Bodie's a sellout, he'll say anything. I don't care. I don't, I, I don't, I don't really care what you think of me. Uh, but I am honest to a fucking fault. Okay. <laughs> and I have never done an operation like that. And I've done it several times. And that bar not been blazing hot and the paint got burnt off of it and all that shit so it's expensive it's like twelve dollars a quart and it's not for everybody i'm not going to say that it is but from here on out will i use it milling absolutely will i use it well i mean i'll use it for a long time because i got a lot of free of free stuff free quarts of it but I'm telling you, there's not a chance in hell with regular, regular stuff that that bar would still look that good. So yeah, I'm a fan now for the right applications, you know, for, you know, I mean, for everyday use, it's, it's expensive. It is, but shit, man, I never thought I'd say this cause I never even cared ever. That's the best bar oil I've ever used by a long shot. <laughs> so uh, now, okay, on with the other things, the other things. Uh, the Archer Pro 42 inch bar and ripping chain. The bar is a bar, you know, the only thing that's gonna set it apart is if it's lightweight, which it's not, it's a standard bar. And if it's, um, durable which i don't know we just put one one cut through it and we used what is very clearly the very best bar oil that you can get i'm, I'm telling you man that dgp okay yeah let's go ahead and do it yes i am in you won me over uh that's uh, that 100 percent would i recommend that any old firewood chucker go out and buy it to try it sure yeah yeah but but like i said it's expensive i, I 
I can get the tractor supply stuff for about a third the cost of that. So, yeah, but, but I can see how it will tremendously extend the life of your saw, uh, your bar. A and your saw, because it's not building up the heat on the bar side. So, yeah. Um, anyway, so, but the, the, the chain made it through one cut. I didn't need to sharpen it. And that is nine feet of white oak. Um, I could tell there towards the end, I, I ne it needs to be sharpened. But, I mean, it made it through. It's fine. And uh, stretched out a little bit. But, you know, I'll go ahead and I'll hit it. The way I do stuff like this is typically if it can make it one, one cut, that's great. I'm, I'm happy. If it can make it one cut, I'm happy. And then I take it off, just give it a clean up, sharpen put it right back on and um, so very happy with the chain it cut good and uh, now the big one can you mill with an echo 590 well one that's been ported by me you can <laughs> uh, would I recommend you doing it with one in general at all no I wouldn't they're not built for this they're not they're not built for this but you get yourself in a pinch you find a nice 20 inch log that's uh, pine, something like that, you know, and you want to play around, go ahead. I mean, this is huge. This, this just to get a, a across this log uh, in a cross cut, uh, need a, at least a 32 inch bar. It's, it's, so this is very big. So if you're wanting to mill with a 590, my guess is you ain't going to be hitting shit like this. So, um, you got a pine tree or a poplar or something like that that fell down in your yard and you want to play around and try and mill it up yeah go for it but you better have a muffler mod because those muffler the mufflers on the 590 they hold a lot of heat so even if you just take off the top of the muffler and drill out some holes for some extra flow clean it out good don't leave any of those metal shavings in there y'all and then put that top cover back on you gotta do something got to do something to get that heat out if you don't you're just asking for trouble uh, and go gentle on it you know the clutch side is probably going to build up the most heat um, and uh, just take your time go easy and I did it but let me tell you for a 96 I, I got to keep throwing that out there because I just feel like y'all that 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 aren't going with a high roof now it's not for everything I'm not saying that it is but every now and then, just try it. It's fun. You're missing out on all the fun by never going to a high roof, a high exhaust roof. Um, but yeah, that's had tons of torque. 96 degree exhaust roof. Now, that combustion chamber is, is welded. I know. I know. You can't typically do that on one of these. But uh, the saw is for sale, power head only. If you're interested in buying it, contact me at bodychainsaws at gmail.com. It will go $425 to the first person who puts the money in my account. Uh, email me, though. Make sure. I, I don't want nobody just sending me money. And, you know, I, next thing I know, I've got four people sent me money for one saw. That's not cool. Um, so, but yeah, if you want to buy that, whoo, Echo 590 right there, 425 will get it shipped to your door anywhere in the United States. So, yeah. Fun video. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Louie loves to hang around with me. Yeah, let him on out. Okay, but what are you doing? It looks sort of like extremely detailed, exact work. <laughs> it is. This right here is going to be a big dining room table. So, um, I'll make another cut. Anyways, there'll be two cuts and we'll, we'll open it up like that. Do you use your sawing equipment to make that horizontal cut? Yeah, yeah, right there. Oh, just this thing? Just, oh, just that, yeah, yeah. Not that thing. No, it's as crazy as it seems. This is... How long does it take you to get through there? Uh, I took about 12 minutes, I think. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, um, this is too big for that. Okay. Yeah. So I got to use a chainsaw. Because if I was to put it on there, it would be huge. 
Oh, and look, I hit nails. Oh, there are nails in here. Yeah, yeah. Cut right through them, though. Yeah. Usually look at that. that's the end of, your, of, your, of the chain. Though. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to show that. Boy, that's a soft spot there. That'll have to get cut out. But yeah. This right here will be a nice, beautiful dining room table. Is that a red oak? No, white oak. White oak, yeah. The, um, the one of those, probably that side right there will get a straight edge cut. Uh -huh. as that way they'll meet in the middle. You understand what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. Otherwise, two of these cuts side by side would leave one great big hole. Yeah. Look, there was nails in it. Really? Uh-huh. Cut right through the nails. It must have been a, a nail put in when it was a young tree. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's going to be nice. Now, this right here is punky. All right, that's from that branch right there. And that's no good. So I'll have to cut all that out, you know, in some nice artistic way or something, you know. I got a, I got a grinder bit for my rotary grinder that works really nice. But I'll have to clean that out and it'll get filled up with some epoxy. But the grain looks really great. White oak is a really nice wood. But look at this. Nail. What's that? Oh, nail. Yeah, we got two of them. That was where I was struggling to get through. And boy, I got through. And you know, the archer chain held up, even though it cut through two nails. Ooh, look at that one. That one's, that one's rough. Ooh, we knocked that one off. Clear off. <laughs> look at that. And that one too. And that one too. Holy shit, man. And that one too. We, okay, so it didn't hold up that well. <laughs> That's kind of a bum deal. I have to get me another chain. Or just keep running that. I mean, it cut through, you know. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, happy day. I'm, I'm enjoying this. This was a fun video. All right. Later. Okay, so we're back in. Everything's cooled off. I already got one bolt out. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this exhaust, this muffler, see if we have any scoring on the piston. Now the oil that I used was Amsoil Saber. What? That one over there had already vibrated loose. And I ran it a little bit rich. So let's look together. I haven't exactly looked yet. No scoring whatsoever. It's fantastic. Fantastic! Oh. Here's the deal. Quit effing about. <laughs> You've got to muff muffler mod the saw. Look at that, you can see right through there. There we go. I can see you. Um, anyways, I'm so goofy. Quit effing about. Muffler mod your saw. Um, you got to get it ported to have enough power to do what I just did. And honestly, I still don't recommend doing it. Okay, that saw was not meant to pull a 42-inch bar. Um, but run good oil, good muffler mod. Uh, and don't cause overdue stress on the saw. A lot of, you know, 
bogging it down and the, the, the engine is spinning inside the clutch. That just creates a bunch of heat and stuff. But the big win of the day, I can't, I, I, I'm really, I, I'm really that impressed. Cause the saw, the, the bar still looks brand new. And before that bar would get so hot whenever I was doing a big milling run like that, uh, especially on a saw like the Echo 590 that does not produce enough oil. It does not send enough oil to your bar for a great big 42 inch bar. 24 inch bar, you're fine. Even a 28 inch, maybe it's, that's a little bit of a stretch, but you know, but even that, but a 42, no chance in hell that thing oils enough. But because of that soybean oil, that DGP, it worked. <laughs> I am definitely going to start using it. Like whenever I run out, I will contact the company and try and get more free stuff from them. <laughs> but yeah, you, you are going to see that that is the only thing that I put in my saws. Uh, it sounds silly to me, but like this, where, there you go. It's a beautiful bar, but we got heat down here on the bottom right? I hate it when that happens. And I got a big 36 inch bar that's even, that's definitely worse than that. That's, that has, that's not bad. That's not bad. But if you can keep the heat down, you get a lot less of that crap. Um, I got other bars that are way worse. Oh, there we go. There's that big one. See, look at this. This is a big, beautiful bar. And that happens. If you can keep the heat down, and keep it good and lubricated, then that's gonna happen a whole lot less. Anyways, yeah, I'm super stoked because the 590 was capable of pulling a 42 inch bar and chain, milling a nine foot section of a big ass uh, white oak log, ripped 17 teeth off. Oh my gosh, I counted them. Look at that, just. <sighs> Just ripped it right off of there. There's 17 of them. Just got ripped off. Bam. So that chain is trash. But anyways, yeah, that's enough for this video. I'm just super stoked and happy that like, I mean, that's, that's killer. That is absolutely killer what it did. Really performed. That's cool. Later.